having digital sovereignty is really important for a lot of countries, a lot of region. Can you talk about how do you see open source is shaping digital sovereignty, not just for Europe, but for the globe? So countries yep. are not overly dependent on one region for their critical IT systems. Great, great question. And frankly, it's one of the key themes that we are developing at LF Europe. Um, one that I thoroughly spoke uh, in Amsterdam two weeks ago and that I will continue to cover across the events that we have in Brussels uh, in mid-October. And you'll see us being more active in this space. Um, so there are two parts to your questions. One is what, how do you see open source being strategic? And second one, how should Europe uh, specifically look at that in, in the scope of digital sovereignty? The first part, to, the first answer is, you know, if you are a, an enterprise, absolutely. And I've learned this through my experience at Finos. Uh, with the largest bank in the world, which, as you can imagine, are the most ROI-driven uh, uh, organizations out there. Uh, it is about the value, the commercial value that you're going to get out of open source in the way you run your business. Is it a cost reduction? Is it a competitive advantage? Is it a commoditization of a certain competitor that, you know, through open source, you are able to make a market or disrupt a market. And so I think those are some of the drivers that when I talk to enterprises across the world, and particularly in Europe, you know, I'm trying to bring some of the experience that I've developed, both working with banks on the East Coast and, you know, living in California now for 10 years as to how the large technology companies think strategically about open source. Again, I'm thinking as a case in point, you know, Anthropic is not a open source company per se, but they have open source MCP, uh, you know, about two months ago. And since then it has gone viral. It has become the framework of choice that is fueling this agentic era of uh, AI that we are in. If you are a public sector, uh, then I think digital sovereignty is absolutely the uh, most important reason why a nation state should look at open source as a way, to your point, to reduce dependencies on, um, uh, you know, known local uh, on foreign uh, service providers. And look, there's a reason, don't get me wrong, why... Uh, uh, um, you know, there are multiple reasons why the hyperscalers got to where they are. It's not just the scale. It's not just the capabilities. It's also being able to, you know, service this, their customers uh, very well. You know, in the U.S., they've got this down to a science. Uh, again, the, 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 the SaaS world that, that I live in uh, has all practices that are very, very, um, again, structured and successful. Um, so... When I think, this goes back to the point that I was trying to make before, it has been clearly recognized. If you hear about initiative like IPCCIS or Eurostack or, uh, um, uh, you know, plenty of initiatives out there, even in the recent um, State of the Union from Ursula von der Leyen, you've heard uh, a call to, you know, prefer uh, uh, European technologies as a fundamental pillar of, of uh, sovereignty, of, of national security. That's, um, you know, absolutely understandable. How does open source play into it, to me, is uh, a nuanced question. Some folks out there are suggesting, you know, that there should be European open source versus U.S. open source versus China open source. Uh, I think that is a very short-sighted uh, view as it would break this beautiful digital commons. If you think about open source is one of the few remaining avenues for us to collaborate globally and it's exponential growth 
growth is largely due to the whole world contributing to the same commons and those 7.7 billion that we see even from enterprises every year being poured in open source. So it's not about fragmenting open source, but it's about understanding that building on the global commons, you can create a very lively commercial ecosystem in Europe, going back to those points of funding, uh, uh, better fun exit climate and you know enterprise contribution back to open source i think if we address those three points europe could create you know the new red hat or uh, the new uh, uh, confluent or the new databricks based on a global open source project but with the company actually being based in europe and therefore you know uh fostering its own charting its own future, its own uh, national security.